So let's take a look at question number one. So it says this question involves identifying and processing the digits of a non-negative non integer. The declaration of the digits class is shown below. You will write the constructor and one method of the digits class. So I'm looking at public class digits. Uh, it says the list of digits from the number used to construct this object, the digits appear in the list in the same order in which they appear in the original number. And notice we have a private array list of integers called digit list. So this is going to hold all of our data. And in part A, we're going to have to create a constructor called digits. Uh, the idea here is that we're going to be past some number and we're going to try and figure out how to extract the digits of this number and put them as integer elements in this array list. Um, then we're going to have to implement a function called uh, is strictly increasing and this uh, method is going to either give us a true or false depending on if the digits are increasing or if they're not. So looking at uh, part A, this is our constructor. So if I'm given a five digit number like 15704, and then what's going to happen is this first number is going to show up uh, and be put in that first spot. The second number is going to be put in the second spot and so forth and so forth and so forth. So what we're going to need to do is find some way to peel off these numbers one at a time. And I have a feeling some fancy dividing by 10 and modulus by 10 is going to give us our answer. Uh, the key thing is that these are going to, each one of these elements represents a single digit, which is why I'm dividing by 10 or using mod 10. And the other thing we have to watch out for is that if we're given a zero, uh, keep in mind that we might have to watch our loop, that we're going to be looping through this number to make sure that we take care of zero as a special case. So looking at this, I've got my public digits int num. Uh, this is my constructor, and the first thing I have to do is I have to create that digit list. So I've got this variable called digit list. And this is going to have to be a new array list of template integers. So I have to create a digit list object that we're going to be manipulating here. And then what I need to do now is to go through this number one digit at a time. So I'm going to say while num is greater than zero. And I'm going to do stuff in here, but then I'm also going to have to take care of this at the end. And I'm going to have to say something like, if um, the digit list dot size is equal to zero. In other words, if zero was the argument, then what I want to do is I want to take digit list and just add an integer object. So I want to create a, uh, excuse me, I want to create a new integer object here. Let's get rid of that. So I want a new integer object containing a zero. So I've got this where I'm creating a new integer object. Now there is something in Java called autoboxing. And what that means is that if I wanted to be fancy, I could have just said digit.add and just put a zero in there. And Java is savvy enough, especially Java 1.7 and, and later, uh, is savvy enough to know that if I just put a zero in here, it really should create a integer object. And so what the Java automatically does is it automatically does this for me. But if I don't think about it, then I, I, can, I can actually physically create an integer object, or I can just put an int in there and Java treats it the correct way either way. So now I need to go through this. Um, what I need to do is I need to get the values in here. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to create a variable called quotient and this is going to be equal to num divided by uh, 10. And I'm going to do an int remainder and this is going to be num mod 10. And so the idea here is that I want to insert these objects into the list in the appropriate way. So if I had a number like 
15704. So let's say I have 15704. If I divide by 10, I'm going to get this as my quotient. So this is quotient. And this right here is my remainder. So remainder is actually going to be the last digit that I have. And I want to want to insert everything after everything that comes from quotient before that element. So what I want to do is I actually want to insert this into the list. So I'm going to do a uh, digit list dot add and I want to add my remainder but I want to add it into position zero. Remember that ArrayList has this ability to add stuff in a particular spot. So what's happening is the very first time I go through this, I've got an ArrayList with a 4 in it. The next time I go through this, my ArrayList had a 4 in it, but the 0 got inserted before it. And then I have the 0 and I have the 4, but this 7 gets inserted before this. I'm always inserting in position 0 and as I insert, the rest of these numbers kind of get pushed down into the array. So num is greater than 0. I've got this int quote gets num divided by 10 and remainder is num mod 10. But I really can kind of cheat here. And instead of just doing int quote, I can just say num. But then if I do that, I need to make sure I take care of this remainder beforehand. So let's go ahead and clean this up just a little bit more. I want the remainder, so I'm going to say int remainder is going to be num modulus 10, and then down here is going to be my iteration for my loop. My num is going to get num divided by 10. So here's my test, and here's my initial my iteration of this. My initialization actually takes care of in the constructor. Now. Autoboxing works real well, so I don't have to create a new integer called remainder. Uh, I don't have to put this in here. I can just put rem like we did down here in the bottom. I can use this autoboxing to my advantage. So that's part A. On part B, we're saying, okay, now that we know our constructor works, I want to make sure that I have a method called is strictly increasing. And this method should return a true if the elements are in strictly increasing or they're otherwise it returns a false. So notice that 1, 3, 5, 6, these numbers are increasing order. 3 is bigger than 1, 5 is bigger than 3, 6 is bigger than 5. Notice here I have a pair of digits that are repeated. In other words, it, this is going to have to be a greater than, not a greater than or equal to relationship. So I get a false in that situation. And of course, if the digits are in the wrong order, I'm also going to get a false. And if instead of being strictly increasing, I'm strictly decreasing, I'm also going to get a false. But one other thing I'm going to have to be careful of is the situation where I only have one digit in my expression. And if that only have one digit, then it by definition is going to be true. So we're going to have to compensate for that in our code. So um, looking at this, Sorry. So I want to write this method. I'm going to be returning a variable. Now keep in mind, whenever I'm returning a variable, the very first thing that I want to do is make sure that I declare that variable. So I'm going to declare a Boolean called uh, result. And then I want to go through the digits in my list, and I want to check them in order. So I'm going to have to keep track of the previous value and I'm going to assign it some number. We're going to talk about what that is in just a moment. But I want to go through my list. So I'm going to have uh, int uh, val in digit list. And keep in mind I'm using that same auto boxing here. This is just called auto unboxing when I'm doing this. Of course I could have these be integer objects. I just have to make sure that I get the value of that integer object later on. But using as ints makes this a lot easier to work with. So if my val ends up being bad, 
In other words, if the digit that I'm getting is less than or equal to whatever my previous value is, then what I want to do at that point is I want to go ahead and return false. Because at that point, if, if this happens, I've gone through and I've hit a snag. I've had a 1, then I've got a 3, then I've got a 5, then this digit here is less than or equal to whatever my previous value was. And as soon as I hit that digit, I know that this result is going to be false because it's messed up. Now, I'm going to have to, I talked about this just a moment ago, and I'm going to need to make sure that I change that value. So I'm going to have to say something like, uh, prevval gets val. In other words, once I've checked to see is 3 bigger than 1, now 3 is the new check val. And then I'm checking is 5 bigger than 3, and now 5 is my new check val. And then I'm checking to see if this digit here is bigger than 5, and that was the snafu. That's the one that messed us up. Now if I make it through this successfully, then if I've made it through this loop completely, then I know that my number is good, and I can just return true. What that really means is that I don't need this variable here. Of course I can declare it, I could go ahead and assign it, but then just go ahead and return it at the end. So the last thing I want to talk about is what is this mystery value here? Well I want to go back to what we talked about before. If I have a single digit, I need to make sure that it'll work. But we also remember from our constructor, we could have a single digit that's zero. So I need to make sure that I can get a value that is less than zero, which means I want this previous value to be negative one. And any negative number will do as long as it's less than zero. Because I want to make sure that if val is zero, that I get through this adequately. In other words, this doesn't trigger. So if the only thing I had was a zero, I want to make sure that I'm never going to trigger this. So here I'd see if zero is less than or equal to negative one, and I'm not going to go into this if statement. I'm not going to return false. I can go ahead and assign previous value to zero, but I'm never going to use it again because I leave this for loop. So that's problem one.